don't even know how to start this video anymore. I don't even, yeah, it's been a while. Hi. I don't, I don't even know where to start, how to begin, but um, let me just start by addressing, if you're new, you're hey, this is the Friendly Drama Queen channel, um, where <laughs> I have a lot of videos on just talking about K-dramas, Asian dramas, so if you're into that, follow. To my OG subscribers, uh, I know, I know it's been a minute and I'm sorry for that. Um, <laughs> I was really trying to do, <coughs> excuse me, I was really trying to do a lot of uh, short form content, but I do find I can't get into details of what I'm talking about because I just have one minute. But if you're gonna check me out on TikTok, um, even though they're kind of mad at me as well. But if you want to check me out on TikTok, I'm over there. I have a lot of more short form content and I'm gonna probably try and be more active over there as well because I'm not just capped at the one minute mark with the short form. So you can catch me there at Friendly Drama Queen as well. But today's video, I am coming back. Um, and I want to just do, this is gonna be a longer video, it's gonna be a longer type video where I talk about the K-dramas that I didn't get to talk about. It's kind of just like rehashing all the K-dramas that I watched, that I liked, that I hated last year um, because I didn't release like my top 10 for last year yet. And then if you have ADHD and you don't want to sit through like a long video, I'm going to try and put either timestamps or I'm gonna splice up sections and make them separate videos. That's my plan, but hope you guys are good. Happy New Year. Um, I, talk to me, say hi. Uh, let me know what you're watching. I'm planning on releasing two videos, so this one I'm just gonna rehash last year, and another video where I just catch you up to speed with what I've been watching. Because I have been in a K-drama slump, I really have. Um, pretty much about last year in September is when my slump started maybe even august I, I was just keeping up with one drama back then moving which i would get into <clears throat> so another difference is i'm trying to make the barrier of filming uh not that crazy because usually my setup is kind of crazy and then i gotta edit so this video is not gonna be as edited uh it's just gonna be shooting the shit as is but um if you're here glad you're here okay gonna get into it so I did kind of make this uh, k-drama wrapped thing that I was gonna post and keep up with uh, but then I had a vacation and I had to scrap that uh, but there are three videos of so I'm gonna do that but I'm just gonna go more in depth uh, this is me really recalling dramas that I watched in 2023 I may have missed some I don't think I'm gonna cover every single drama that I watched but um but I'm going to try and the ones that I do list because I prepared it in this K-drama slide the ones that I do list I have a vivid memory of okay so we're gonna get into it let me just pull up my K-drama wrapped slide uh, we're gonna start with January <laughs> I, I had this whole thing guys I had this whole thing on prepared like the powerpoints I was gonna show you all but unfortunately my editing software is not gonna let me so this is what it is okay so January in January these are the dramas I was watching um, of last year Alchemy of Souls part 2 which I love I love I still love but I do think it's not rewatchable <laughs> because part of why people were checking it out in the first place if you don't know what Alchemy of Souls is um, I mean have you seen this couple Look at them, they're cute. Um, it's actually hard to explain what it is, but it's one of those fantasy romance situations with switching bodies. Yeah, so I actually like that one. It came in two parts. Uh, the problem is I think it's just like a one-time watch because part of the thrill of watching it is watching all the twists unfold. But as far as like the main parent, the main couple, I thought they had a lot of chemistry. I was watching for their chemistry, like hands down. Um, and then another drama that was big in January was Crash Romance, Crash Course in Romance. So this is more of a older 
mature couple type vibes he's like a math tutor and she's like a single mom that's the main couple there this one a lot of people loved it in january but for me it was like a, a slow uh a, i had to try a several times to really get into it and even then i don't think it's like a highlight for me like it is for so many people this is the kind of drama that i had me really gaslighting myself i'm like why does everyone like this drama except me so i kept going back and re-watching it and re-watching it and i'm gonna be honest it's not my fave and i think that's gonna have to do with the actors like i just didn't i wasn't into that couple pairing that's just my honest opinion and also the plot i don't know the plot just didn't have a hook on me i was not interested but i say all of that and i i will still say it's a good drama because it's just not for me personally but it's a good rom-com and at that time when we were craving rom-coms in january it did what it was supposed to do also in that month we had forbidden marriage forbidden marriage i talked about on this channel y'all can't even see this but the drama is called the forbidden marriage it's based on a i believe a manga or a webtoon um it's a <laughs> it's about a a con artist who basically tricks this prince prince into thinking she has the spirit of his dead wife or she can harness the spirit of his dead wife it sounds crazy it is on the wackier end uh it's historical I think this drama is kind of highly underrated. The girl carried this, so the female actress in the show, she carried it. Um, I do think it's it's not getting all the flowers it deserves. It just kind of slipped under the radar, but it was in January, so maybe that's why. Um, more dramas in January. I'm going to speed through them because these are like, eh, okay. So Strangers Again. This is like a 12 episode drama. It's not on any streaming site. It's really about a divorced couple that kind of like tries to give it another go. Like a second chance romance. Uh, started out great, ended terribly. I'm not going to recommend it. Okay. Uh, the next drama, Agency. Agency is not a, is not a romance. It's, it's just like office boss lady. It's about this woman who runs this uh, marketing agency in the cutthroat world it's in i didn't really get into this one i think i saw half of it and then i just forgot about it i just did not go back to it but if you're one of those k-drama watchers that you don't necessarily watch for romance or you don't watch yeah for romance because i think you're either a romance k-drama watcher or you're not because it's kind of yeah if it doesn't have romance i know a lot of people check out I think this one could have had romance, but it's not the primary. It's not the primary focus of the of the show. So that's agency. And then oh, this is the worst. This is the worst K drama of January twenty twenty three. It might be the worst K drama of twenty twenty three, and that is Coke Do. Y'all, Coke Do. This one. You see this one? This is the worst drama. <laughs> Is the worst single-handedly i have not seen anyone say they like this drama and if you do you're gonna have to explain to me why why because the chemistry wasn't there the plot was confusing the way it was shot like i gave it a fair shot i i think i made it maybe five episodes in and i was like oh this is not getting better it's it's not gonna get better so i had to dip so much so much I want to say so much potential, but no, it was still given a knockoff goblin, but like confusing. So, no. Okay, so that was January. Let me know what your favorite K drama for last year was in January. Now we're moving on to February. <laughs> Y'all gonna see the slide today because I made it. Um, okay, first drama in February that I remember is Love to Hate You. I have a whole video on this drama, recapping it, going deep diving into it. I love it. I love it. It's actually one of, it's making my top 10 for best drama of last year. I like how short it was. It's, I think it's like 12 episodes. The pacing, this is the kind of pacing I wish most K-dramas would have. 
you know it's like between the the courting phase and the get together phase and the breakup phase everything was just moving smoothly along i really liked it i loved that it was more of a mature couple i thought the chemistry was there and also you teo is in it so that's enough reason and also in january i said february because february was february was my oh I wanted to say February was my favorite month of last year in terms of getting quality K-dramas. I'll say that right now. I might change my mind later on the video. Because February also gave us Call It Love. Call It Love is this one. Oh, that's Guy. That's Call It Love. Call It Love is more of a melodrama. Very angsty, like the male lead is staring out looking gloomy and the female lead is like just wants to break things and cuss people out like that's the vibe this one is like you curl up you're you're gonna be moody and sad i actually really loved the cinematography of this show it came at a time where i think i needed something like this because i know it's not gonna be for everybody because it was just so angsty and melodramatic oh my god i'm struggling here okay it was so angsty and it was so melodramatic and like some would say the ending wasn't it's like one of those open ending type things but i i liked it i think i'll still recommend it. it's still one of my highlights of last year it's short enough and it's one of the disney plus k dramas because i do have disney plus and i have been watching slowly watching through their catalog of k dramas as of last year and even this year it's gone so much better in my next video, I'm going to talk about like some of my favorite K-dramas of right now are from Disney+. Plus. Okay. Next drama in February, speak it, see again, Taxi Driver 2. Taxi Driver 2. <sighs> Taxi Driver 2. I don't know what his name is. You might not even say it, but Google it. Taxi Driver 2. It's the part 2 because there's a part 1. <laughs> what the fuck? This part... Yeah. Um... Taxi Driver 2 is one of those like vigilante thrillers, so it's not a ro romance. It's this guy who drives a taxi cab and he gets picks up his picks up clients who he avenges something that's happened to them. And the reason I I feel so strongly about this K-drama, because it has a part one, a part two, and now it's where we need for season three, is that it kind of gets into the true crime cases that's happening in korea like sort of like the social political like uh like criminal like all that stuff the underbelly of what's happening in south korea and and it it does it in a fun way for me at least because i love to see revenge type of shows and it's funny because i remember especially season two i don't know if oh fuck sorry one second i gotta turn my phone off when i'm doing these videos because otherwise it's not gonna be good okay so as i was saying taxi driver so taxi driver 2 i really liked again because i have been getting into this youtuber lately her name is stephanie sue <laughs> she does these like retelling of cases that happen and across the board but like i like particularly some of her uh korea or sometimes even china uh, cases that she dives into and i found a couple have correlated with some of the stories that taxi driver tackles and taxi driver does tackle true crime stories so i don't know that was a, that was a long winded, winded way of me saying i really really like the taxi driver series and if you're really in the mood for to see action and fighting and also get some sort of insight into uh, korea's criminal true crime that vibe this is the, the drama to watch oh i spent so much talk about the drama you, that's how you know i really that is a highlight of uh 2023 for me that k-drama okay now i'm gonna get into the dramas that i was like eh, well okay with one caveat so um i'll start with the caveat island island is a drama that came out on disney plus i want to even say even at the tail end of january going to february that i initially fell in love with i really liked that drama initially because i can't even tell you why i like it now so maybe maybe that says something but cha and moon was in it and maybe maybe that had something to do with why i liked it maybe um but air 
season two came out and it was absolute trash and i just want to remove that drama from my memory in entirety so um i did have a video up on it but then i think i took it down this is island it's set in jeju it's like paranormal supernatural i think the lore just got really confusing for me and didn't quite make sense but the villain was good in it but then it got convoluted there are people who like the island and initially I was one of y'all and then I'm not anymore. Sorry. Now for the two dramas I hated in February last year, Heavenly Idol. You, you cannot tell me anyone liked Heavenly Idol. The way, the way that drama like did, did one of these, it started like this and it was like, and then it just went to the ground. I... I was shocked by how how off the rails that drama was. <laughs> like, you have one job. Okay, before I get into Heavenly Idol is about an angel, like an actual angel of, yeah, I'm gonna call him an angel, who comes down to earth and then has to, and takes the place of a uh, idol member in a failing idol group. And then he's tasked with reviving the group. Um, and then the, the love interest is, a manager who's like a secret fangirl of the group of the guy yeah okay so it's a priest trying to be an idol fall in love with an idol's manager <laughs> how could they get that wrong it sounds wacky but it's pretty simple like it could have just been light and comedic the whole time the angst should have really been zero and they shouldn't have gotten way in depth with the lore of like the whole angels and the demons like it was just so like weird and abrupt and um the chemistry was in chemistry as well it was a huge disappointment it was it really was okay and then oh y'all are gonna not like me for this one but i think i think this one is called our booming youth I don't even have the names, I just have pictures. <laughs> Our Blooming Youth? I think that's what that one's called. It's Park Shin. Oh man, I have to do a quick Googles. Is it called Our Blooming Youth? Yeah, it's called Our Blooming Youth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's with, I don't know why I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched K-drama, so I'm like starting to forget their names. But the actor, the actor's name is Park Hyung Sik. Park Hyung Sik. Sik. And it's rated 8.1 on um, drama list. And people love this K-drama. I just couldn't get into it. And what's the reason? I found it boring. I watched the first two episodes. I thought it was boring and at that time in February look at its competitors okay like three of my favorite dramas of last year came out in this month so I was kind of cutthroat with k-dramas during this month I was like if I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it it gotta go so our blooming youth got the chop there I don't think I'm gonna revisit it it doesn't feel like a standout drama to me it feels like one of many like I'm sure you can find another drama just like it and watch it like i don't think i'm missing much by not watching our blooming youth let me know if, if you think i'm wrong <laughs> and yeah let me know so that's february <laughs> this is gonna be a long video because i it's like 20 minutes in and i'm just i just finished february okay let's go into march okay march in march in came the rom-com that everyone was hyping bora de bora now i wanted to like this i think everybody wanted to like this drama because it was like at a time where there was not a lot of rom-coms except for i guess love to hate you which came and went quickly um this one is about i'm, I'm trying to like explain it from my memory it's about i think she's like a she's a dating expert who's about to write a book and kind of like her love-hate relationship with this guy who ends up being her publisher. And when I say love-hate, it's more like she's chasing him and chasing him and chasing him. 
and he's not doing anything really back until like maybe the last couple of episodes the quip like what i felt watching this drama was the equivalent of watching a girl get down on her knees and propose to a guy what i felt was like watching a girl right write love letters and confess to a guy and being repeatedly rejected but still getting back up and still confessing that's that's the vibe and the feeling and the cringe and the secondhand embarrassment i was feeling watching this she had no backbone girl she this is not this is not my kind of love story my it doesn't involve the woman torturing herself to get the male's leads attention that's really the main reason i can get behind this because this is not to me an ideal love story some people say oh maybe it's realistic if you've been in the friend zone or you've had a guy friend zone you or something like that maybe you can relate with this i i want to let's leave let's leave that one okay so to erase the erase the bad taste of bora deborah around that time is when a good mother bad mother came out which is a standout drama of last year good mother bad mother is a really good drama it's um i think it's a lawyer who gets into a car accident and loses his memory and he regresses to when he was like five and then he has to go back to the village and live with his mother and then they bond and kind of overcome the trauma like repair their relationship type of thing and there's a cute romance in it and there are cute kids in it and it's actually a really good drama looking back it's even something i think i would re-watch i say that hesitantly because keep in mind i'm not a heavy re-watcher the things i tend to re-watch are like old old og classic k-dramas because i'm reliving the nostalgia of like when i had the uh, patience and a more a longer attention span to actually like deal with some bullshit um so yeah that is good bad mother another drama that came out and y'all recommend this one was called oasis and it's a time period drama and a time period that isn't really often explored i think it's like the uh oh, i don't want to say it and then get it wrong but i'll show you the the um costume so you can figure out the time period oasis um i don't know why i bring up this drama because i did not stick with it i watched the first two episodes and i dropped it don't really have a strong reason why i dropped it i think it's rated highly if you've seen oasis let me know yeah i'm gonna skip that one okay so that was march um, I'm gonna pause though because my camera is dying. Okay, so <laughs> continuing on, I'm just trying to get comfortable. Grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack because we're only just about to round up March here. Okay, so another drama that came out in March was uh, The Glory 2, which I don't think I need to stand hard on this video. The Glory is a great K-drama. It's great. I have a video on it here. How old? If it, yeah. It's on my <laughs> it's on my YouTube page somewhere. But Glory 2 is a great drama and um, there's really nothing else to say about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another drama that came out that I briefly started was a Disney Plus drama called Pandora. Which is one of those revenge thriller K-dramas about this woman. <clears throat> who like comes to realize that she 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 had lost her memories a while ago and it seemed that she had a past as like a killer and she's just like trying to unravel her current life and how it ties in with her past i i did say i was gonna go back and finish this kid drama but um at that time it was competing with the glory too and i just and the good bad mother so i just picked those dramas over it but that drama didn't get a lot of buzz it didn't so that's unfortunate okay now we're in april we're in april it's springtime and what dramas were we looking at 
Uh, okay, I'll start with Dr. Cha. Yeah, Dr. Cha is a good drama. Dr. Cha. Dr. Cha was following like a woman who decides to go back to med school and kind of like the effects of that decision on her family dynamics. It had the most insufferable husband character that I've seen in a K-drama in a while. And just as insufferable was actually the main female character because I think I got to about episode... She, she was with him for way too long. In fact, I definitely stalled on watching the finale of that K-drama because I was so worried it was gonna end on some bullshit like she forgave him. And granted, the drama does tackle themes that kind of explores the nuances of why making such a decision may not be so simple and black and white, why she couldn't just pack up and leave her husband. Um, but it was also trying to be like women empowerment. So it was like really doing this fine aligned balancing act, which I appreciated, but also that's not really what I want to see in the in like a in a K drama that I'm escaping to, in the sense that I just wanted to be like, fuck you and leave. And it wasn't quite like that, you know, it was still very gracious. <laughs> she had a gracious way of handling things. She had so much patience. And I mean, watching that drama really just made me appreciate um, what women have to do to keep their families together. Like, like the thought process of like all the things that they have to consider. They always putting themselves last and it was a heartwarming. It was a heartwarming drama. I would recommend it. I would. Yeah. Um, April also gave me a couple of duds. So here are the duds. Family Unbreakable Bond, which was a Disney Plus K-drama. Um, that was supposed to be like given my spy, my spy family, like the anime. Because uh, it was about basically a couple or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that type of vibe where it's a couple where they're both spies but they don't, they don't know that each other, they don't know that they're spies. It had potential but it really went south fast. The, the, the humor of the show was so odd and it was like the tone and the humor was not what I expected from the show. It was more like slapstick and very much physical humor even awkward circ like just <laughs> the point is i didn't get any of the jokes i just thought this is really weird and silly and then by the time it got into like the thick of it like oh i'm a spy you're a spy the tonal shift was so jarring like is this trying to be a action comedy is this a family drama is this a romance it, it just never really found its foot in with me and i i wanted to give it a lot of chances so i did talk about it briefly on the channel and then i just stopped talking about it because my conclusion is that it it, it sucked it sucks don't watch it um another drama that came out was dr romantic 3 and the only reason i didn't check out dr romantic 3 is because i'm gonna say it publicly i am not a fan of the dr romantic series i don't hate them i'm just not like Ooh, let me watch the next season that comes out you know I just I just I feel like a medical dramas medical K dramas in me it's really a struggle to get through sometimes if there's not like a strong romance pushing it forward it's really kind of a struggle and there was romance in Dr. Romantic I just know they happen to be fairly kind of slow burn and it's deceiving because you think it's fast paced because usually it gets together pretty early on the series but i don't think the series is about romance it's really about what is the series about i'm not the one to speak on dr romantic it's just not my type of series so um but people who love the series love the season three so you can check that out if you want to also in April, I think there was two other dramas I watched in April. One was called Duty After High School. Um, I ended up checking out season one and season two. I had two seasons. It started off really promising. It follows basically a bunch, like a world where there's an alien 
a pendant alien invasion or it already happened i'm i can't quite remember but the students now have to train like a military training after school in preparation to fight these aliens oh i hope that's i hope that i remember that correctly the first season was interesting and great and i was like oh this is gonna be probably my underrated pick of the year because it wasn't getting too much buzz because mind you it wasn't on any streaming sites that i was aware of but then season two came out and it just went like this for me so I just wiped it from my memory. You could still give it a chance if you were into that. I definitely have made a video on it. Like it's probably in one of my list of videos. So yeah, there you go. And then the last drama for April, which kind of ended up spanning a long time because it's a family drama, is called The Real Has Come. I know some of y'all don't watch dramas more than 50 episodes. I believe this one was either exactly 52 episodes or it could have been a daily drama that was like 100 plus episodes let's double check and you're like how can you not remember because i was kind of watching this drama as it was coming out but the problem is okay it's 50 episodes it's 50 episodes um but it was infuriating to watch it's one of those dramas where like every character is annoying as hell and you're just like god damn it get to it so if i wasn't watching it as it was airing i probably would have never picked it up um and i did give up on it i gave up on it i think about episode 30s when i gave up on it because it was starting to go in circles so the real the premise the premise of the show is that a woman ends up being accidentally pregnant it's given it's given jane the virgin vibes no i i mixed them up i mixed it up so the real has come she becomes pregnant but at the same time she finds out her boyfriend is cheating on her so she dumps her boyfriend who she's pregnant for and then she ends up getting with um not getting with but she makes a deal with this the main lead who's a gynecologist uh for him to act like her boyfriend and the father of her child because his family wants him to have a child and a wife so then it's like it's like a fake uh contract marriage put in a kid put in annoying family members that's what you get from the show <laughs> i'm looking at it in drama listen i was waiting seven it's it's rated 7.3 i honestly think it deserves lower <laughs> the way you know actually maybe not if this was a simple 12 episode maybe even 24 episode K drama and the pacing was a little tighter i think i would like this drama but you are watching a 50 episode drama so you have to keep in mind that like there are episodes that just are just gonna make you want to like bang your head against something it's just so frustrating to watch so that's april do y'all need a break because <laughs> i think i need a little break but i'm a power through i'm a power through now we are in may um i think may was rough because i'm about to list a couple of dramas and all of them i felt eh about okay there was my perfect stranger um my perfect stranger was a woman and a man going back in time and they have different motives she's trying to prevent her parents from falling in love because they were miserable in their present life and he's trying to either solve or prevent a crime um i didn't get into it i thought it was not that interesting um and the female lead was frustrated as hell okay second one tale of the nine tailed 1938 i believe um you either love it or you hate it i'm in the hater camp and I, I don't i don't i didn't like it my reasoning for not liking Tale of the Nine Tailed is that I just wasn't into it. How do I explain? Like, this month was a dud for me. I was just like, uh, no. You have two seconds to impress me. You know that TikTok where it's like, you got two seconds to impress me, and it's like, they started like, wrap it up? That's how I felt about a lot of shows during this time. Okay, Black Knight came out on Netflix, which I did try to watch. It was given dystopian, um, it had Wu Bin in it. It was short episodes. It should have been something I would have liked, but I didn't make it past episode two. 
it was again it didn't impress me enough I skipped number five delightfully deceitful delightfully deceitful I actually did get into it's about the best way to put it is a compulsive liar meets a really nice guy gullible guy and they kind of try to make it work in the backdrop of a criminal case I believe the reason I initially liked this one is I liked the opposites attract bromance trope and it was it, it was giving maybe not enemies to lovers but like she did not she wasn't into him at all in the beginning but the problem was the female lead became very very unlikable like she became unlikable like by episode four i'm like mm, this pathological mind thing is not that attractive for me to root for her to find love so i didn't finish it again but i made it the farthest with delightfully deceitful with this show delightfully deceitful two other dramas came out here that i kind of wish i finished and i do think they're underrated to some extent i will go back to them battle for happiness which is given more like a penthouse of eyes but like social it, it revolves around social media and motherhood that doesn't even sound like a like a good way to sell it to you um so i'm not gonna try and sell it to you because i didn't even finish it myself but i did hear good things about it it's called battle for happiness and then the last one would be bitch x rich yeah bitch x rich so bitch x rich seems to be another like school bullying show but the cuss word in the title had me intrigued intrigued so i was gonna try and check it out i never i never did so i don't know why i put it on here i watched the first episode and i didn't stick around so i don't know why i put it on here oops but if you've seen if you've seen that show let me know so that is may is that halfway through the month? This video might have to be a two-part. It might have to be a two-parter. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Oh, January, February, March, April, May. That's five months. Okay, we'll do June. We'll wrap it up and I'll do a part two. Okay. So in June... Okay, this is where some of the biggest K-dramas of last year came into play. We had See You in My 19th Life, which was my personal favorite. It kind of dragged towards the end but I liked it still. King the Land. King the Land. I'm gonna come back to that. I'm put up in a King the Land. Lies Hidden in My Garden and Celebrity. Those were the four dramas that I watched in June. See You in My 19th Life, I already spoke heavily. Like, I love that K-drama. It was based on a webtoon. It's about a girl who is her 19th reincarnation and her seeking the guy that she fell in love with in her 18th life to reunite with him it started out great i think i loved the tone the raw like i even loved the female character i loved how bold she was um and then there's got a little sketch like in the angst part of the the angst section of the drama where they're supposed to be briefly separated uh i just i just kept rolling my eyes because it just felt so contrived like not necessary like very forced and i just went to fast forward to when they got back together which is what i did if i'm being honest i was like mm -hmm. this could have stayed a light rom-com all the way through we didn't really need this angst section but it's okay drama it's gonna have angst at some point king of the land that's the beautiful k drama with yuna and oof i forget his name but I am in the minority camp of this was a good K drama, but it it would have been okay. Actually, let me rephrase that. I think King the Land is a drama that would have been like mind blowingly good, maybe like ten years ago. <laughs> now it was just full of so many, so many cliches. Like I was nothing shocked me in this drama everything was just like yeah and he's gonna do that uh, and she's gonna do that and he's gonna say that to someone who's been watching k-drama for a while like it just wasn't anything unique special it was just eye candy it was just eye candy so if you were watching it just to support your fave or to see yuna then like yeah that's a reasonable reason you also get a cute enough rom-com in there 
but um it's definitely not my fave it's not my fave i didn't think it was unique enough okay and then celebrity ended up coming out on netflix i never really spoke about that k-drama but it was a really good one again about like so it's a woman's rise in social media and her kind of mm, that's really the most i can say about it it's a woman it's about a woman and a group of girls in social media and how she rises up to be popular and then her downfall i really really like this drama actually i really liked it, it surprised me because i started with no expectations i thought the acting was stellar i thought and it was a pretty short episode as well as like i believe it's also 12 episodes it ended well it started well i liked the romance i was really feeling this drama so highly recommend it um and then i think the last drama i watched was lies hidden in my garden i didn't finish it it was more of a thriller and i probably will go back to it because it did it does have pretty good acting like the the actresses or the actors in the show were really good um but I wasn't fully in the mood for a thriller when I picked this one up. So, and it was, it was like heavy tonally. So I ended up dropping it. So that is the first six months of 2023 and all the K-dramas I watched. And I'll tell you what my highlights are in summary. Um, okay, so from January, it was uh, The Forbidden Marriage. February, I would say Love to Hate You, Call It Love, and Taxi Driver 2 in march the glory part two and the good bad mother and nothing from april nothing from may june i i like to see you in my 19th life and celebrity there you go